हेलो कैन एनी वन प्लीज कंफर्म वेदर एम आई ऑडिबल और नॉट यस प्लीज योर वेदर मच ऑडिबल Good evening, everyone. I am Riya Tapwal. I am doing PhD at IIT Kharagpur under the supervision of Professor Sudeep Mishra. Today, we are going to discuss the topics of week five, and after that, we will discuss the assignment questions of same week. first topic that we are going to discuss today is the challenges that we face uh, in iiot in iot sorry so uh, there are uh, various challenges that we face in order to deploy iot so first challenge is large scale of cooperation so basically there are uh, thousands or billions of devices uh, that need to uh, interact with each other in the distributed environment so to make the interaction between those devices possible it is a dif uh, difficult task second one is a uh, global heterogeneity so the devices which are deployed or the sensors the actuators which are deployed in iot environment are heterogeneous uh, they follow different standards uh, they are uh, built by different vendors right so uh, to make the communication po possible between those heterogeneous devices it become a difficult task then uh, third is unknown iot device configuration sometimes the configuration of these devices are unknown due to which uh, the deployment and the interaction become difficult and the last one is semantic uh, conflicts so uh, sometimes there are various semantic conflicts between the different iot devices so this is one of the major challenge that we need to solve so in order to solve these challenges the solution is interoperability so interoperability is a characteristic of a product or system whose interfaces are completely understood to work with other products or system present in future in either implementation or access without any restriction interoperability in iot uses different types of devices and these devices are made up of different vendors which follow different specification there is no particular standard that these devices follow 
so consecutively what happened is uh, uh, these different devices uh, by different vendors uh, they uh, it is not necessary that they uh, will f follow same protocols and even uh, the profiles of the users which are using those devices may be difficult so in order to make the communication between those devices possible it is required that all those devices should follow same standard okay so in order to make uh, that thing possible interoperability is the so uh, solution so interoperability means what uh, so let's say that one particular device is following a particular protocol and other device is following another protocol so how these two devices will talk to each other so in order to make this communication possible uh, we need to standardize the uh, protocols or the uh, or the uh, methods with the which they are communicating so this standardization means uh, excuse me ma'am yeah screen is not visible screen is not visible it is visible Now is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, please. please. Thank you. Now, uh, what is the need of interoperability? Is to make the communication between different devices uh, meaningful, and second is to exchange the data or the services between those devices. is trying to join okay. uh so uh, to fulfill the needs of a, a different uh, iot um, the needs such as this physical objects can interact with uh, any other physical object and can share their information interoperability is necessary any device can communicate with any other device at any time or anywhere Uh, to make this possible interoperability is necessary after that uh, to make a uh, machine to machine communication possible possible device to uh, device communication possible device to machine communication possible interoperability is necessary and uh, at the end a uh, seamless device integration with the iot network uh, there is a need of interoperability now why uh, exactly we require this interoperability so the major concern is heterogeneity so different uh, the devices which are uh, deployed in iot environment uh, so these uh, devices may follow different wireless communication protocols such as your zigbee bluetooth uh, gprs six low pan and wifi uh, they may follow a wired communication protocol such as your ethernet higher layer lan protocols all those things after that it may be possible that the pro uh, programming languages uh, which uh, your uh, devices are using are not same uh, so the computing systems and websites such as your java script java c c++ or so these languages uh, used by your um, iot devices may be different right so in order to make uh, the, uh, one particular standard interoperability is different so it may be possible that the hardware platforms are different your operating systems which are used by these iot devices are different then the databases which are used um, may be different then the data representation may be different for different devices then the control models and your syn uh, synthetic and semantic interpretations of the data may be different for your different kind of devices now uh, this interoperability is of two types first one is your uh, user interoperability and second is your device interoperability so user interoperability means the interoperability problem between your user and your device because we need our users also to communicate with your device right so in order to make this possible user interoperability is required and second is your device interoperability so the interoperability problem between two devices is called your device interoperability 
so there might be chances that both the devices are following different standards right so to make this possible device interoperability is necessary so consider this scenario where this user american user wants to survey uh, survey lines using these uh, cameras uh, one is uh, situated at uh, delhi and second one is situated at uh, japan so uh, the uh, camera which is uh, present at uh, delhi may be uh, that device may be following some different kind of standards or protocols please mute yourself pooja jay shankar if you want to say something then please ask otherwise mute yourself talking that uh, so the device which is present at uh, delhi uh, the protocols or the standard which is following by this device may be different from the standards which is following by the uh, cctv camera which is uh, situated at japan right or the language is also dif uh, different so um, this american user is using english uh, uh, the device which is present at uh, location uh, japan uh, is using japanese and the device which is located in india it may be using english or hindi so in order to make this communication possible between all uh, th uh, these three that is your user and between two different devices and device and user interoperability is required so the problems which are uh, there is the user uh, does not know about the devices uh, a and b so first of all we also need to register these devices to the user second problem is device a and device b b are different in terms of synthetic and semantic notions uh, this i have already told third is uh, so it is difficult uh, to find the cctv device so that uh, so because uh, these devices first of all are not registered second uh, they are following different standards due to which it become difficult to, to uh, locate those devices so user you can't understand the service which is provided by device a and device b similarly both a and b mutually don't understand each other so, next uh, topic is your user interoperability so the problems that are, uh, that exist in user interoperability are uh, first one is your device identification and categorization for discovery second one is your synthetic interoperability for device interaction and third is your semantic interoperability for device interaction device uh, identification and categorization uh, there are various methods that can be used so the solutions which are present for uh, generating unique addresses for each device with the help of which uh, the, uh, these devices can be identified are your electronic product codes uh, universal product code third one is your un uh, uniform resource identifier that is your uri and you can also do uh, this thing with the help of your ip addresses so you can assign unique ip addresses to each of your device and with the help of uh, which you can identify those devices now these are for device uh, uh, to provide identity to the devices now the uh, device classification solution so there, there are two classification solution present one is your uns psc and second one is your e class now synthetic interoperability for device interaction so the interoperability between device and device user in the form of message formats 
so the format of message which is uh, which are using by different devices or device user uh, is called your syntactic interoperability so as the from the name it is clear that uh, the syntax uh, of the uh, communication language should be same or uniform uh, the message format from a device uh, to a user uh, should be understandable from the user's computer and on the other hand the message format from the user to the device is executable by the device so consider a scenario where user wants to interact with your particular device device can be anything so in that case uh, okay uh, so see these things are not solved by me actually these things are handled by nptel so you can contact them directly uh, please mail them and they will uh, solve your problem regarding your exam fee payment so uh, yeah so we were discussing that if a user wants to communicate with your device then the language which is understandable by your uh, uh, user uh, is uh, executable at your device end and same thing uh, the data which is generated by your device uh, should be understandable at the uh, by the user so uh, some of the approaches uh, for this are service uh, oriented computing based architecture can be followed web services are there then restful web services are there then open standard protocols such as your ieee 802.15.4 uh, these are the communication protocols that can be used then the closed protocols such as your z-wave but uh, the problem is that uh, these are the protocols which are uh, necessary for the communication of two devices or uh, you with user to the device but these standards are incompatible with each other so we need to make a standard with the which uh, with the help of which uh, this interaction can be made possible now uh, so uh, we need to solve that problem uh, that uh, the communication problem right so we can use um, middleware technology with the help of which we can bridge the gap between two devices so how this can be done is by dynamically mapping the physical devices with different domain and based on that map the devices can be discovered and controlled remotely uh, so uh, cr uh, cross context synthetic interoperability is there uh, collaborative concept uh, exchange uh, these are the possible solution with the help of uh, which uh, this uh, interoperability problem can be solved and using your xml syntax uh, this can be achieved now uh, next is your semantic interoperability for device interaction so the interoperability between the devices and the device user in terms of message meaning so uh, in case of syntactic it was message format and now it's message meaning so this is called your semantic interoperability so the device can understand the meaning of user's instruction that is sent fro uh, from the u uh, user to the device and at the same time uh, uh, your uh, user should understand the message which is sent by your device so semantic conflict uh, refers to the different processing logics applied to same iot network devices or application similarly the user can understand the meaning of device response sent from the device right so uh, some popular op approaches in order to achieve this is your um, by using ontology so there are three types of ontologies uh, first one is your device then physical domain and then estimation ontology now the collaborative conceptualization theory so in case of your collaborative conceptualization theory uh, object is defined based on the collaborative uh, concept which is also called your conce uh, cosine con uh, concept so the representation of collaborative sign is defined as uh, following uh, each object is uh, 
defined with the help of uh, four uh, variables that is your a b c d so a is the cosine internal identifier b is the natural language which is followed c is the context of the a and d is the definition of the particular object for example in case of your cctv the cosine will be so a is the internal identifier so it is uh, for the cctv it is your 1 2 3 4 second is, b is the natural language which is english uh, then third is the context so here we are using cctv right and d is the de uh, definition of the object so uh, in this we, we are going to define uh, the uh, characteristics or the features of your camera the uh, cctv camera so this camera type is bullet communication and network is ip high, uh, horizontal re uh, resolution all those things in the definition now the device interoperability so in order to achieve device interoperability the solution is your umb that is your uh, universal middle middleware bridge so it solves the Uh, so it solves the seamless interoperability problem caused by heterogeneity of several kinds of home network middlewares uh, umb create virtual map among all the physical devices uh, of all the middleware home networks such as your uh, genie lonworks uh, hvi unpnp right so it creates a compatibility among these middleware home networks uh, so the, the components of umb are your umb core and umb adapter so here you can see that if these devices that is your power uh, th th that is your this um, uh, automatic light uh, this uh, ethernet idplay uh, 1394 if uh, this camera all these physical devices are wants uh, to communicate with each other uh, uh, see here this electric light and this uh, tap is uh, connected with your power line uh, th this device is connected with your power line then your a uh, camera is connected with ethernet and this uh, device is connected with your ipp uh, 1394 okay so all these devices are following different standards so in order to make communication between these devices possible what we will do is we we are going uh, to place this umb on the top of these devices so basically this adapter will uh, sit on the top of uh, the, the protocols which are followed by these devices and with the help, uh, and this adapter uh, is going to create a one unique standard which uh, is followed by all the devices which are interconnected right uh, so this umb a converts physical devices into virtual uh, virtually abstracted one as described by umb uh, device template and uh, your uh, dt consists of global uh, device id global function id global action id global event id and global parameters so you have umb uh, adapter translate the local middleware message into the global metadata message so basically all the local messages are converted into global metadata message and with the help of this global metadata message the other device is going to understand whatever is said now the umb core so you uh, so we also need to route the data right uh, from one device to other device so umb core is responsible for this thing so for um, making the routing possible uh, or for routing the data from one device to another device uh, umb core is used so the major role of your umb core is routing uh, the universal metadata message to the destination or any other umb adapter by middleware routing table so one uh, routing table is maintained which is called your middleware routing table so by using the information which is stored in your middleware routing table the data is routed now uh, consider this example so first of all uh, the, we need to, to register this cctv device to your uh, network so first of all um, with the help of uh, umb8 the dis uh, detection and configuration of your device is done then after that we need to uh, since your U adapter is going to create virtual device for each of the device so virtual device for your cctv camera is uh, um, created then uh, the status of that particular device is shown um, that this device is uh, now available for use so device online status and the id of the device is uh, shown to your umb core 
now this umb core is responsible for the routing and the exchange of messages right so this umb core is going to notify uh, the other devices or the ad other adapter which are present in the network that this umb uh, that this particular device is active now see now consider that your uh, this device this uh, computer is um, wants to communicate with your this light bulb right so first of all local control monitoring messages are sent to your umb adapter uh, okay so the, all these things uh, there first of all uh, registration and then one particular uh, virtual device is created for this so all those messages are exchanged then look a uh, local umb message uh, conversion so uh, this uh, these messages are further sent to your uh, umb core and then uh, the requ uh, query or action request is sent to other adapter right and this other uh, uh, so this adapter is uh, late, uh, associated with your light bulb so this will further send the message to your light bulb so on the basis of the request which is sent by your computer the light bulb will act and further send the local message to its adapter and this adapter is going to send the message to the umb core and this umb core is going to send a response to your further adapter which is associated with your uh, this computer so here this local uh, control monitoring message means all these messages which are, i have explained uh, in this diagram now the next topic is arduino for that Arduino. Okay. Uh, so Arduino is the open source based electronic programmable board, and uh, and along with it, there is a software uh, which is uh, ID uh, where we can do the programming related to this board, and it accepts both analog and digital signal as input and gives uh, the desired output, and uh, there no extra hardware is required in order to load program into the controller board in case of your Arduino. now the features of your arduino so the operating voltage which is required by arduino is 5 volt and the clock speed is 16 megahertz uh, the number of digital uh, input output uh, pins are 14 uh, analog input pins are 6 pwm that is your pulse width modulator is it's 6 uh, and uart is 1 uh, then the interface is usb by uh, 8 mega 16 u2 now the types of arduino board so there are four uh, types of uh, arduino boards available so first one is your arduino board based on 8 mega 328 microcontroller second one is your arduino board based on your 8 mega 32 uh, u4 microcontroller Uh, third is arduino boards based on 8 mega 2560 microcontroller and last one is your uh, based on uh, 8091 uh, sm 3x80 microcontroller now this is a picture of arduino board so it consists of power supply that is your usb or power ba barrel jack uh, then the voltage regulator then uh, led power indicator which will show whether um, your arduino board is getting power or not uh, then uh, led indicator uh, after that your uh, output uh, output power ground then analog input pins and the digital input output pins so basically this is the usb connector with the help of which you can connect your arduino board to your um, computer or system this is a power connector with the help of which you can give power to your arduino board these are the 14 digital input and output pins with the help of which you can connect your arduino uh, to the other uh, iot devices now uh, these uh, these are uh, 
your uh, analog input pins and uh, these are your uh, output power okay and here is one uh, led light which will show that uh, your arduino is getting a uh, power or not and there is one more led uh, which is which can be used in case of, since there are various uh, already loaded program in your um, Arduino IDE. So, in order to check whether uh, your Arduino is working fine or not, if there, um, if the hardware is um, working fine or not, this LED can be used by just running the program which is over there. And if the LED is uh, blinking, then it means your Arduino board is uh, working fine. now uh, your arduino ide so arduino ide is an open source software that is used to program the arduino controller board so it is based on the variation of c and c++ programming language so first of all uh, um, you have to uh, download and install uh, this ide on your system and whenever it's done you have to connect uh, the arduino board to your system and after that you have to select the particular kind of board which you are using uh, for that you have to go to the tools so this is the interface which will you will get when you will open arduino so this is the interface which will get when you will open the arduino ide so in order to um, select the particular type of board you have to go to the tools and after that you have to select the particular Arduino which you want to use. Similarly, you have to select the port also. So, same you have to go to the tools and after that the ports and select the port on which you with the help of which you want to make the communication. Now, sketch. sketch so the program which is coded in your arduino ide is called sketch so in order to create a, a new sketch first of all you have to go to the file after that you have to click new uh, okay then new sketch will be create a uh, new interface will be open and there you can code your program and uh, can create a new sketch and if you want to open the existing sketch then uh, similarly you have to go to the file and then open and then you will get the list of the sketches which you have created already you can open one of the sketch present there so uh, there are also uh, various uh, ready to use sketches available um, as uh, in the example uh, section so from there you want to use any of these uh, and check uh, uh, whether uh, how they work so first of all whenever you write your sketch you have to verify that so verification means uh, you have to check whether your code is working or not for checking whether there are some any compilation error or not so uh, this is similar to compile in case of your c and c programming so c plus plus programming So verification will check the code for the compilation error. Once the verification is done, uh, you have to upload the final code to the controller board which is done with the help of upload. So these are the symbols. So in order to verify, this is the symbol. This tick mark symbol is uh, for verify to upload this uh, forward arrow. Uh, then if you want to create new blank sketch, this is the uh, new um, uh, symbol. Then if you want to open, then upward arrow is the symbol uh, and if you want to save a particular sketch then this don't, downward arrow is the symbol so uh, open um, okay open mean open uh, opening the existing sketch save means saving the particular sketch which you have just created so uh, in this figure 
since i have already told you that there are various uh, examples which are there in your arduino ide so in order to open those uh, you have to go to file then examples then these are the types of codes which are or sketches which are available so if you go to the basics and then if you go to the blink then as i have already told you that there is a particular uh, there is a um, that led present over your uh, board so if you are going to run this code on this uh, sketch then that particular id will blink now the sketch structure so uh, this sketch is divided mainly into two parts first one is your uh, setup and second is your loop so the function setup is the point where the code start so just similar to the main function in case of your c and c++ programming setup is the function used in your arduino programming uh, so input output variables pin modes are initialized in the setup function and loop function um, as the name suggests it iterates the specific task which is given in the sketch so here in uh, here you can see that uh, this is the setup function and in this you are going to define a serial begin a 9600 and after that uh, this is the loop function uh, and this loop function is going to print your hello arduino now uh, the data types which are present in your um, arduino ide are uh, uh, void in boolean byte wo word float array um, character unsigned char unsigned int unsigned long double so all those things after that the input output functions so arduino pins can be configured to act as input or output pins using your pin mode function so with the help of arduino either you can get input from various sensors or you can also give output to the actuators right so this is uh, this can be done with the help of function that is your pin mode function so how to use this pin mode function so uh, here as you can see that inside your void setup uh, function you have to um, write pin mode and you have to mention the pin uh, over which the connection is made and the mode in which you want to um, communicate for example your input mode or output whether you want to take input from the devices or whether you want to give the output now uh, digital write is a function which um, writes high or low value to your digital pin second is your analog read uh, so this is responsible for reading the an uh, analog input pin that is voltage across the pin Th uh, then the character functions are there for example your is digit which will tell whether um, the value is digit or not then is alpha then is alpha numeric is digit is lower is upper is space um, then uh, all these functions are going to return either 0 and 1 so this will tell whether uh, this particular for example in, in this function is dig uh, digit if we are passing a digit then it will uh, return 1 and if it is not digit then it will return false that is your 0 and then there is one function called delay function which is used in order to add delay uh, in your uh, uh, program so basically it accept uh, integer value and the value which uh, is uh, which it is accepting is in millisecond so for example if you are passing a value 7000 uh, 7000 7, it means it will create a delay of 7 seconds or 7000 milliseconds now uh, we want to ma uh, so in this example we want uh, this led light to blink so for this uh, the requirements are your um, arduino controller board uh, usb connectors then breadboard uh, led then resistor connecting wires with the help of which connection can be made and arduino downloaded on your system Uh, so first of all you have to make the connection so connect the led uh, to the arduino using the breadboard and the connecting wires uh, so connect the arduino board to the pc using the usb connector and you have to select the board type and the port 
after that you have to write the sketch in the editor uh, after then you have to verify that sketch and upload uh, so uh, for this uh, connect the positive terminal of your led to the digital pin 12 here in the example i am taking 12 you can take any other pin uh, number also and the negative terminal to the ground pin of your arduino board Two So connect the positive terminal of your LED to digital pin uh, 12 and the negative terminal to the ground pin of the Arduino board. Just similar to this um, figure here you can see that uh, this LED uh, is um, connected, uh, on the, po uh, the positive pin is connected to the digital pin 12 and the um, uh, negative is connected to the ground. After that set the pin mode as the output which is connected to the LED pin 12 in this case. So whenever you will write uh, the code, you have to mention that uh, the, the output should, uh, uh, you have to mention the output uh, of uh, because you are giving output to the LED from your Arduino board. So uh, the mode you have to mention as output and uh, since the connections are made to the uh, pin uh, 12, so uh, in the pin you have to mention 12. Uh, now use digital write function to set the output as high or low uh, since we want your uh, led to either blink or not so whenever uh, so first of all uh, you have to put um, uh, as high after that you are uh, giving a delay of one second because delay is taking the in input in the form of milliseconds so here we have given thousand it means a delay of one second after that we are we want our led to turn off uh, turn on sorry so for uh, turn off here uh, in the comments it is written wrong so uh, for low it is turn off so after the, uh, a turn off we all we again want a delay of one second so we are using uh, the delay thousand again so uh, uh, in this figure as you can see whenever we uh, we will run that program led will uh, turn on for one sec uh, for one second after that it will turn off for um, another one second and this process continues as we are uh, we have written this code inside your loop function now the operators and the control statements which are used in your arduino so uh, there are uh, various kinds of operators such as your arithmetic operator, comparison operator, boolean operator, bitwise operator, compound operator. So in case of your arithmetic all your equal to, plus, minus, multiply, division, modulus all those operators are there. Then for comparison equal to is not equal to, less than, greater than, less than equal to, greater than equal to, then boolean operator and or not bitwise operators are there then compound operators are there so this, these are similar to other operator which are used in other programming languages only then the control statement so similar to other programming languages uh, here are also control statement that is your if, uh, if else statement right so um, the syntax of your uh, if else uh, is this for if statement you have to write if inside the if you have to mention the condition then the curly braces so whatever you want to uh, do uh, write inside your if condition uh, and uh, put the statements whatever task you want to perform uh, similar for if else condition inside if put a condition uh, after that the statements and then if this is uh, not true then L, inside the else you have to put the statements uh, similarly if uh, else if and else statement so if then you have to put the condition so for example if you want to uh, check whether your number is um, uh, less okay so you want to check whether your number is less than 30 or not so in that case if a uh, number is less than 30 you want to uh, you have to put that condition in this condition and then you have to or uh, print here that number is less than 30 if it is and if it is not then in, in uh, else condition you can print this uh, the same thing 
similar for this also if uh, else if and else also now switch case is also there um, in case of your arduino so in uh, the syntax is here so inside the switch you have to put the choice and after that there are various uh, options or cases um, where you can uh, write various statements and at the end you have to break those so the syntax is similar to your c programming language only now the conditional operator so uh, okay so conditional operator is there so, so if a uh, first statement is true so if the condition is true then it will return first statement and if it is false then it will return uh, the next statement now the loops so uh, um, the first uh, loop which is present in uh, this arduino is for loop so inside for loop you have to make uh, first of all initialization then the condition and then increment and after that uh, you whatever you want to place you can place in the um, body of this loop uh, then the while loop is present uh, the syntax is similar while then condition then the statement till the condition is true and then do while is also there so first of all uh, you will write the statement which you want to do and then after that inside the while you will put the condition so the difference between while and do while is uh, in case of while first of all conditions are checked uh, however in case of your do while first of all the statement is executed uh, or uh, and after that the condition is checked so in case of your do while at least your program will run for one time and in, uh, if the statement if, if the your statement is not true then also your program will run for one time however in case of your while if the condition is not true then the uh, statements are not executed uh, hello ma'am uh, hello ma'am yeah. uh, ma'am uh, what is the difference uh, uh, between the else if condition and else if else conditions okay so in case of your else if condition there are only two categories right for example you want to check whether your number is less than 30 or greater than 30 however if there are more uh, conditions for example uh, you want to check whether your number is uh, less than 10 okay after that you check whether your number is less than 20 or not and uh, other are greater than 20 only right so in first condition uh, in case of your if else if and else condition i am talking about so if you want to print if your number is less than 10 you are going to place inside the if so if number is less than 10 print less than 10 else if number is less than 20 and greater than 10 so uh, print in else if condition and in the else greater than 10 okay so if the cases are more you are going to use if else if else condition and if the cases are two only so if uh, this then uh, okay otherwise this condition then you can use if else condition so this is similar to c programming language only okay yeah okay. so yeah okay. yeah uh, now uh, arrays so arrays are the collection of elements having homogeneous data type that are stored in adjacent memory location so the conventional starting index is zero However, you can uh, vary it, but uh, conventionally uh, the starting index, index is zero. So in order to declare an array, you have first of all, you have to mention the data type, for example, int. Then you have to give the name to your array, that is the variable. And, uh, here it is uh, AR, uh, ARRE and then the size, for example, your five. The alternate declaration is you are not giving the size. However, you are mentioning uh, the elements which are there in the array so basically the data type then the name uh, you are not mentioning the size and you are just putting all the elements which are there in the array so. hello hello yes yeah, uh, ma'am, yeah, uh, is there anything else we, there we are going to cover in this session cover, apart from yeah, this apart Arduino? From this Arduino. Uh, no, Arduino only and after that the questions. Okay, okay. okay actually, okay. Uh, actually uh, uh, yeah, like, is there any chance uh, to get the recording session? I will upload this uh, on YouTube and share the link with you uh, next, uh, on the next session. So will it be shared through so email? Be shared email? Through email? Or will it be sharing? No, no, no. Uh, 
in the online session only i'll share that thing uh, with you actually uh, I, i have a uh, meet right, right now i got to go so is there any community or is there any connect from where i could get like because i won't be available at all i don't know whether nptl ma'am there is a group or uh, uh, for whatsapp uh, regarding this iot okay so i'm not there so i don't know so if anyone can share if anyone of you having the link of the previous videos you can share that link there and with the help of those links you can get to this link also right okay. Shishan, can you please add me? You and I'm also not there in the group. Like, can you share the link or can you add me? Share me. Um, wait a minute. I am sharing the link of WhatsApp. Please. please. Thank you uh, so much, and I'm sorry for the internet. Internet. Okay. 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 So yeah. Uh, now the multi-tool is multi-dimensional array declaration. so in case of your multi dimensional arrays uh, first of all you have to mention the data type and the name and the different dimensions for example your n n1 n2 rows columns and height so, so here in, in this example int arre then uh, row size column and the height now the strings so array uh, of characters with null as a termination is termed as your string so Uh, for uh, the declaration uh, using uh, so for uh, strings the declaration can be uh, done with the help of array only so first of all you have to mention the data type then the name of the string uh, that is str here uh, either you can give the size uh, here or uh, you can not give uh, similar to the case of arrays and you have to mention the string okay or you can do this uh, one by one also so uh, here uh, at position 0 you you are going to store a at uh, okay it should be one here so at string position 1 uh, you are going to place b at string position 3 uh, you uh, you are going to place c and at fourth you are going to place d and at fifth there should be a termination right so this is for a b c d now the functions of string object so first function that we can use is str to upper case so this function is uh, helpful for changing all the characters uh, of the string to upper case the second is your str replace str1 str2 so this function is going to replace your string1 with your string2 uh, third is your string length so uh, this function is responsible for uh, or it will return the length of your string without considering the null value so uh, if we are going to pass string length a b c d then it will going uh, it will give 4 as length not 5 now the random numbers so uh, three different kind of functions uh, can be used in order to generate your random number first one is your random seed int v so this will reset the pseudo random uh, number generator with seed value v uh, then a uh, random max i so it will give the random number within the range 0 to max i for example uh, in random uh, if you are giving random 7 so uh, this function will generate the random number between your 0 and 7 so 0 and 7s or 7 or also uh, can also be present uh, next one is your random min i and random max i so th this function is going to generate random number between your uh, between the within the range min i and max i now uh, integration of sensors with your arduino uh, so similarly uh, as you have integrated led uh, light with your arduino we can integrate other sensors also so here uh, this is the example of integrating dht sensor with your arduino board so uh, this is a picture of your dht sensor so dht sensor consists of four pins that is your pin 1 2 3 4 from left to right so pin 1 is the power supply pin second pin is the data pin third is the null and fourth is the ground <coughs> okay uh, so um, okay so uh, in order to use this dht sensor or uh, in order to integrate dht sensor with your arduino first of all you have to load its library so arduino supports a special library for your dht 11 and dht 22 sensors Uh, which provides the functions to read the temperature and humidity values from the data pins 
so these are the functions which are already there in the in that particular dht library so in order to load that particular dht library you have to go to the sketch after that include library then manage libraries and after that when you click manage library this interface will get open then here you are going to write the name of the sensor which you are going to use okay so here in this case uh, it is dht so once uh, you will write the dht the, the dht sensor library will get uh, you have you will get option to install uh, and you have to click there and dht sensor library will get installed to your id so once it is done you have to make the connection similar to the connection which we have made in the case of your led so uh so once the connections are done and uh, you have to write the uh, code also um, when it is uh, all done then uh, your uh, arduino id is uh, getting uh, the values from your dht sensor that is the sen uh, temperature and sensor value which we are uh, which your sensor is sensing so similarly as you are integrating sensors with your arduino which are taking input from your arduino uh, you, you can also integrate actuators so here this is a uh, servo motor which can be integrated uh, which can be integrated with your arduino so similarly we, uh, as we have um, downloaded uh, or we have loaded the library for your dht sensor we have to do this for your servo motor also so you have to follow the same steps after that once it is done uh, you will write a code with the help of which your servo motor is can be handled by your arduino so your servo motor is a high precision motor which provide rotary motion between your uh, 0 to uh, 180 degree uh, there are three wires in your servo motor uh, so the black one or the darkest one is the ground red is for power supply and yellow for your signal pin so basically this red you are going to put in the power supply black you are going to put for ground and yellow uh, you can uh, put this pin Output uh, to any of the digital pin of your Arduino board. Now the question is. Someone is asking, ma'am, I have one doubt. What procedure I have to follow for getting top rank in this exam? Okay, so follow the videos which are there. After that, solve the assignments. Then also read the books. That is introduction to Internet of Things and uh, that introduction to Industry 4.0 and uh, IIoT. Okay, so if you will do all those things, then you will get top rank in this exam. Uh, would, you would you be kind enough to type in those books, books for us, please? What? Would you be would kind, kind enough to yeah. type in the, the chat, chat window okay. on, on the, the books book that you have, have just referred to, please? Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. So now we uh, we will discuss the questions of week five. So first question is. The sixth slow pan allow interoperability between IEEE eight zero two point one five point four based wireless devices as well as other IP based devices. Options are yes, no, not applicable. I am repeating the question. The sixth slow pan allow interoperability between IEEE eight zero two point fifteen point four based wireless devices 
as well as other IP based devices, options are yes, no, not applicable. So the correct option for this question is yes. Six low pan allows interoperability between IEEE 802.15.4 based wireless devices as well as other IP based devices. Six low pan simply uses a bridge to enable the communication between these devices. So basically this bridge is responsible for making the communication between different devices possible. So this uh, bridge is a gap between uh, the standards which the different devices are using. So this bridge uh, is going to um, remove that gap and provide a standardized way with the help of which these devices can communicate with each other. Next question is, servo motor works on the principle of options are electromagnetism, PWM that is pulse bit uh, modulation, magnetism, none of these. I'm repeating the question. Question is servo motor works on the principle of electromagnetism, pulse width magnetism, uh, modulation. Sorry, uh, next one is mag uh, magnetism, then none of these. So, the correct option for this is PWM that is your pulse bit modulation. So, servo motor works on the uh, principle of pulse bit, um, bit modulation means its angle of rotation is controlled by the duration of applied pulse to its control pin. So basically this pulse width modulation is commonly used um, control technique that generates analog signals from digital devices such as uh, your microcontroller. Uh, the signal thus produced will uh, have a, a train of pulses and these pulses will be in the form of square waves. Thus, at a given time, the wave will either be low or high and uh, by using uh, those um, uh, waves, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the rotation of this um, uh, servo motor can be controlled. Now, uh, how the pulse width modulation signal is generated? So basically, a pulse width modulating signal is generated using a comparator. So modulating signal forms one part of the input to the comparator while the non-sinusoidal wave or sawtooth wave forms the other part of the input. The comparator compares two signals and generates PWM signal as its output waveform. And if, sawtooth signal is uh, if the sawtooth signal is more than the modulating signal, then the output signal is, the high, uh, is in a high state. The value of the magnitude determines the comparator output which defines the width of the pulse generated by the output. Now, next question is, which of the following is not a commonly available Arduino board in the market? Options are Arduino Uno, Arduino Mega, Arduino Nano, Arduino Duo. So the correct option for this is Arduino Duo. So basically this Arduino Uno, Arduino Mega, Arduino Nano and Arduino Duo are present in the market. After this, uh, there are various um, compatible systems are present uh, which are com uh, compatible with your board so you know, although the hardware and software designs are freely available under copyleft licenses for Arduino the developer are uh, have requested that the name Arduino be exclusive to the official product and not be used derivative works without any permission so uh, the name uh, Ciduino uh, the processor which is used is at mega 328p then Sedeno Cortex the processor which is used is SAM D21 Cortex 
then Sidon, uh, Sidino uh, Lotus uh, processor is at mega 328p then Sidono, uh, Sidino Lotus Cortex MO um, the processor is SAM D21 uh, Cortex MO uh, and likewise uh, there are various other uh, boards available uh, which are using different uh, processors after that the next question is different processing logics applied to same IoT network devices or application is classified as options are semantic conflict configuration conflict processing conflict heterogeneity conflict so different processing logics so uh, the correct option for this is semantic conflict because uh, uh, in case of your semantic conflict if the message is not understandable then semantic conflict occur uh, so uh, here it is written that different pro processing logics apply to same IOT uh, network devices then the problem which will occur is your semantic conflict that uh, it is also important to know that providing semantic description along does not pr uh, provide semantic interoperability and will not solve all the issues regarding discovery management of data and supporting autonomous interaction the semantic description still needs to be shared, processed and interpreted by various methods and services across different domains. Uh, so defining an ontology and using semantic configuration for data will make it interoperable for users and stakeholders that share and use same ontology. In the IoT domain, different stakeholders need, need to have a common agreement on ontology definitions. Most of the current ontology and semantic uh, description framework in the IoT domain are defined in the context of different projects and application or they are currently at, at an early stage. So to achieve the uh, global scale semantic uh, interoperability, common semantic annotation framework, ontology definition and adaptions are the key issues. So uh, the conflict which is related to your processing logics is called your semantic interoperability, semantic conflict. Next question is, which of the following is true for collaborative conceptualization theory? Options are, it overcomes the limitation of ontology, it enables cross context semantic uh, interoperability for any object. Uh, third is it both overcome the limitation of ontology and enable cross context semantic interoperability for any object. Next one is it represent the things as symbol for semiotics. So which of the following is true for collaborative conceptualization theory? So the correct option for uh, okay first of all i'll tell you that what exactly is collaborative conceptualization theory and after that i'll uh, tell you that um, which is the correct option so in case of your collaborative conceptualization theory each object is defined based on the collaborative concept and that concept is called cosine the representation of collaborative sign is defined as follows. So a cosine of an object uh, is defined by using four uh, attributes uh, A, B, C, D. So basically A refers to a sign internal identifier, B is the natural language, C is the context of the A and D is the definition uh, and D is the definition of the object. So, for example, in the case of your uh, CCTV in camera, which we have uh, discussed earlier, 
uh, the cosine uh, will be um, first is identifier so identifier is taken as 1 2 3 4 here the natural language is english uh, the context of a is it is a cctv and um, camera then the definition so camera type is bullet uh, uh, then communication used is network ip and the horizontal resolution is given as 204.48 tvl so this solution approach is applicable for different domains context after that So this uh, collaborative conceptualization theory is used to overcome the limitation of uh, ontology and it also enables uh, it also enables semantic uh, uh, cross context semantic interoperability for any object. The next question is which of the following is true for the following command serial begin 96 <laughs> options are Arduino exchange messages with serial monitor at a data rate of 9600 bytes per second 9600 represent binary ones and or zeros per second both Arduino exchange messages with serial monitor at data rate of 9600 bytes per second and 9600 represent binary ones or zeros per second. Uh, last one is uh, Arduino exchange messages with serial monitor for 9600 simulation time. So which of the following is true for this? option for this is B that is your 9600 uh, represent binary ones or zeros per second. Basically this serial begins sets the baud rate for serial data communication. The baud rate signifies the data in bits per second not bytes per second. So first option is incorrect. Bits per second means either 0 or 1. So 9600 represent here binary 0 9600 uh, bits per second. The default baud rate of Arduino is 9600 bits per second. Uh, we can specify other baud rates also for example your 4800, 14400, anything. Okay. So, this serial begin is declared in two format. Basically, uh, you can uh, write begin. Then uh, in the begin, you can write the speed. And uh, also, the other uh, way is serial begin. Along with speed, you are going to specify the configuration. Okay, so configuration means uh, speed. First of all, means it signifies the baud rate or uh, bits per second. Uh, so in this example, only speed is mentioned. However, uh, the configuration means uh, it sets the stop parity and the data bits along with. For example, here it means 9600 bits per second. So the correct option for this question is that's why 9600 represent binary zeros or ones per second. Next question is which of the following standards can be utilized as device catalogs? Options are E class, UNSPSC, uh, both UNSPSC and E class. Uh, next one is uh, none of these. I am repeating the question which of the following standard can be utilized as device catalogs options are uh, E class, UNSPSC, 
go through an SPSC and E class, uh, none of these. So the correct option for this is uh, both UNS uh, PSC and uh, E class. So basically what happened is with the continuous improvement of internet of things technology various IoT platforms are under development. However each IoT platform is developed based on its own device identification system. That is, it is uh, challenging to identify each sensor device between heterogeneous IoT platform owing to resource request format, format, for example, your device identifier, varying between the different platforms. So, moreover, despite the considerable uh, research focusing on resource interoperability between heterogeneous platform, little attention is given to sensor device identification system in di diverse IoT platforms. So in order to come, uh, in order to overcome these uh, issues, various uh, methods, uh, the researchers have provided various methods uh, in order to uh, provide identification to your IoT devices. So uh, these are um, the two of the methods or uh, uh, standards which are provided by the researchers. So one is your UNSPSC and other one is your E-class. So correct option for this is C. Next question is which of the following enables interoperability? Options are uh, cloud cl uh, computing system, sensor nodes, middleware, all of these. So which of the following enables interoperability? Uh, options are cloud computing system, sensor nodes, middleware, all of these. So the correct option for this is middleware. Basically what happened is uh, there are various devices present in the IoT network and all these devices are following a different standard, different protocols, right? Uh, maybe the operating system uh, on which these devices are running, maybe these are the different. So it becomes difficult for these devices to interact with each other. So in order to make communication possible between uh, two different devices, who are following different standards or different communication protocol, middleware can be used for making their communication possible. For example, consider two devices uh, which are using two different communication media, for uh, namely Bluetooth or 6 low band. Right. Now we need uh, these devices to interact with each other. So we need to put some uh, middleware in between those two devices. Uh, which will interface your both the devices that is your uh, Bluetooth interface as well as your 6 low pad interface. So that particular middleware is going to take the data from the one device and convert that data into a particular standard and further whenever uh, it will send the data to your um, uh, the other device which is following 6 low pad it will convert the particular data to the uh, respective standard. So the next question is which of the following is true for the sketch command given below delay 1000 so options are it provides a delay of 1000 second it provides a delay of 1 second it provides a delay of 1000 simulation time it provides a delay of 1 simulation time so delay 1000 so basically delay function in Arduino Uno 
takes uh, integer value and the uh, integer value uh, is in millisecond so basically uh, if you are putting delay 1000 it means 1000 milliseconds so 1000 milliseconds means 1 second so the correct option for this question is it provides a delay of 1 second uh, and the way uh, this delay function works is very simple it accepts single integer and this uh, integer represents the time basically and the time is in millisecond only so the program should wait until moving on to the next line of code when it, it encounter this function so that so uh, whenever your program will uh, encounter this function it will wait for that particular amount of time and after that it will go to the next line of the code next question is in a sketch string can be declared using array uh, string object both array and string object none of these so in case of your uh, uh, in, in a sketch uh, you can declare your uh, string with the help of array as well as with the help of string object in Arduino so the correct option for this is both array and string object so basically when you are going to declare your string with the help of array so what will you do is first of all you have to mention the data type and uh, further you have to give the name uh, uh, the, for example arr is the array name and after that you have to specify the size for example you want to store abcd right so uh, the, uh, the size is 4 however in case of string there is one null character also at the end so you are going to create an array of 5 and in that particular array you are going to store the variables that is your abcd so at 0th position you can store a at 1th position you can store b at 2nd uh, position you can store c and at the 3rd position you can store d and at the last you can store null pointer However, the string objects also allows you to manipulate the text of the uh, text in a uh, variety of useful ways. So, uh, with the help of this, you can append characters to string, combine string through concatenation. You can get the length of the string also. So, all these functions can be uh, done with the help of your uh, string object. And also, you can uh, declare um, string with the help of string object also. Now the next question is in synthetic interoperability between devices and device user the message format from the user to the device is blank by the device. Options are understandable, executable, both understandable and executable, none of the above. Uh, in case of your uh, okay so, so uh, whenever there is a synthetic uh, interoperability and uh, a user wants to interact with a particular device then that user should be able to understand the messages which are sent by the device to the user and the device should be able to execute the commands which are given by the user to your device so the correct option for this is executable because uh, the message format from the user to the device should be executable by the device. So the correct option is executable. So applications can take advantage of parsers and APIs in order to provide the synthetical manipulation facilities. So if a language is standardized, it is used actively 
uh, and required parcels and APIs are implemented. Okay, so uh, uh, in the case of your syntactic interoperability, the syntax of the message or the format of the message should be understandable. Next question is, in a sketch, which of the following function initialize input output variable and pin modes? Options are initialize, loop, setup, init. A question is, which of the following function initializes input output variables and pin modes? The correct option for this question is setup. Basically, the Arduino programs uh, calls the setup function as the first thing when the Arduino unit powers up. So, any code that you place in a setup function in your sketch runs the first and it only runs one time. So, it is basically similar to your main function. The setup function is a great place to initialize input and output pins so they, uh, they are ready to be used. So, you know, the correct option for this is setup function. Next question is, uh, which does pin 3 from left to right as shown in the figure in uh, digital humidity and temperature uh, sensor signify? Options are power supply, data, ground, none of these. which does pin 3 from left to right as shown in figure below in digital humidity and temperature sensor signify options are power supply, data, ground, none of these. So basically your DHT sensor that is your digital humidity and temperature sensor is used to sense the humidity as well as the uh, temperature values. It consists of four pins. Uh, so, uh, pin 1 to pin uh, 4. Um, so, uh, first pin that is your pin 1 is responsible for getting power. So, it is the power supply pin. Pin 2 is uh, data pin. Pin 3 is null. And pin 4 is ground. So, basically pin 3 uh, is, uh, is null. Right. So, in the options there is no null option. So, uh, the correct option for this question is none of these. Next question is, which of the following best describes the command given below? Uh, command is servo demo write 180. So, uh, options are creates an instance of the servo, pin writes 180 to the servo, servo moves 180 degrees and last one is all of these. So, which of the following describes this? The correct option for this is it moves the servo by 180 degrees. So basically your servo motors have three wires that is your power, ground and signal. The power wire is typically red and uh, should be connected to the 5 volt pin of the Arduino board. The ground wire is typically the black or the brown one, the darkest wire and it should be connected to the ground pin of your Arduino board. The signal pin is typically the yellow, orange or the white one and it should be connected to the digital pin of the Arduino board. So, uh, whenever your servo draw, uh, draws a considerable amount of power, uh, Uh, it will start working and this uh, uh, servo demo uh, write uh, is responsible for moving the 
motor by 180 uh, as it is mentioned uh, that 180 uh, in the servo right so it will move servo by 180 degrees other methods that are uh, associated with uh, uh, servo library is attach write write microsecond read attach detach Further, the library which is used um, is servo.h. So, whenever uh, you are going to use servo, uh, servo uh, motor, you can use the library servo.h. So, this library allows uh, an Arduino board to control the servo motors. Servo uh, have integrated gears and shafts that can be precisely controlled. Uh, standard servos allows the shaft to be positioned at various angles that is your 0 to 180 degrees and continuous rotation servos allows the rotation of the shaft to be set to various speeds. The servo library support up to 12 motors on most of the Arduino boards and 48 on the Arduino Mega. On the boards other than Mega, the use of library disable analog right functionality on pins 9 and 10 whether or not there, uh, there is servo on those pins on mega up to 12 servos can be used without interfering with pwm functionality use of 12 to 23 motor uh, will disable pwm on pin 11 and 12 next question is which of the following is an interoperable system Commonly used for automation. Options are lawn box, drop box, think speed, all of these. Which of the following is an interoperable system which is commonly used for automation? So the correct option for this is Lawnworks. So Lawnworks mm, is an open standard for networking platform specifically created to address the needs of control application. The platform is built on a protocol created by Eclor Corporation for networking devices over media such as your twisted pair, power lines, fiber optics and RF radio frequencies. It is uh, used for the automation of various functions within buildings such as your lighting, uh, building automations and all those things. After that, there are various applications of your loan box. For example, in your semiconductor manufacturing, lighting control system, energy management systems, uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems, security system, home automations, consumer appliance control, public street lighting, monitoring and control, petrol station control, Rail electronic controlled uh, pneumatic braking, all these are using lawn works. Next question is which of the following UAB topology is self configuring? Options are mesh, star, both mesh and star, grid. Basically, UAV have uh, two topologies that is your mesh and star topology. In case of your uh, star topology, uh, there is uh, one um, uh, flying object to which all the other uh, objects are interconnected and that flying object are uh, connected to uh, your ground station. The other possibility of star is all the flying objects are interconnected to one ground station only. Okay. So in case of star, if the middle uh, or the um, central node get defected, then uh, the communication between all the other nodes cannot take place, right? So in that case, it is not self-configuring. However, on the other hand, in case of your mesh topology, each and every node is interconnected with other nodes, right? So if by chance one particular node is corrupted, then the nodes can uh, interconnect with each other or can communicate with each other through other nodes. Fine. 
so in uh, the mesh topology is self configuring so uh, the failure of one particular uh, link uh, is not going to affect the communication of the network so the correct option for this is mesh topology next question is umb consists of options are umb a and umb c umb a and umb b umb b and umb c umb a and umb e so uh, the correct option for this is umb a and umb c so basically your umb consists of your umb core and umb adapter so whenever two uh, devices which are um, uh, which are following different protocols and standards wants to communicate with each other then we are going to uh, place uh, umb over your uh, that uh, devices uh, the uh, the protocols which are using by those devices so uh, umb adapter sits over the protocols which are used by those devices and is going to create a virtual device for each of the device okay so whenever this virtual devices are formed then a global metadata is created so th that global metadata is understood by the network so uh, further this global metadata is uh, used by uh, umb uh, core in order to route and whenever the other adapter uh, uh, receives that uh, umb um, that uh, global metadata it is going to further convert that uh, global metadata into the local message again uh, the next question is umb creates virtual maps among the blank of the uh, middleware blank uh, of all middleware home networks options are virtual device physical device heterogeneous device services option for this is physical devices basically umb creates virtual maps among the physical devices of all the home networks such as havi genie lonworks and unp pnp upnp so basically the integration of computing power and communication into next generation of everyday device is one of the major factor that is der uh, deriving the emergence of home networks which interconnect various appliances enabling remote access and control of those appliances and any available service such as home entertainment home office and home automation nowadays the increasing diversity of home devices implies that various kinds of home network middleware will be working in home because these devices typically have severely restricted computation resources middleware technologies most appropriate for these devices are continuously turned up it is highly improbable that there will be a single dominant home network middleware platform that would be good enough for various appliances and purposes in near future it is a key element for achieving digital home to provide interoperability um, among the heterogeneous home network middleware which have quite different command and data delivery mechanism because current uh, currently most available uh, home network middleware such as your havi genie lonworks upnp have no compatibility with each other home devices based on these heterogeneous uh, middleware cannot communicate with one another even though they are physically connected th therefore uh therefore there is a need of a software so for example your universal middleware bridge that can be used to solve the interoperability problem caused by heterogeneity of several kind of home network middlewares next question is which of the following is the functionality of umb adapter options are it translate the local middleware message to global metadata message it translate the global middleware message to global metadata message it translate the local middleware message into local metadata message it translate the global middleware message to local metadata message
correct option for this question is UMP convert physical devices into virtually abstracted one which translate the local middleware message into global metadata message. So the correct option for this question is A that is translate local middleware message into your global metadata message. Question number 20th. Which of the following is true? Option A is relay is an actuator that uses electromagnetic effect to act as a switch. Relay can open and close circuit when electricity is passed through it. Relay can be used to control power supply to any other connected device. Next option is all of these. So which of the following is true? Basically, your IoT power relay is a controllable power relay equipped with four outputs that help you to uh, create an Internet of Things uh, project with safe and reliable power control. With IoT power uh, relay, you can easily control the power going to the device with an Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Okay, so it, uh, 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 it is basically an electromagnetic component. Uh, electronic component that uses electromagnet to act as a mechanical switch. So first statement is correct. The main purpose of relay is to switch on and off high power circuit from a low power circuit. A relay switch can be seen in many different shapes and sizes, color, electrical rating and capabilities. The component uh, rating is one of the most important aspects that should be considered while you are purchasing a relay for your project. So if we use a relay that cannot support the power that it will be used in that uh, will be a problem. So uh, the correct option for this is all of this because relay is an actuator that uses electromagnetic effect to act as a switch. It can open or close the circuit when electricity is passed through it and it can be used to control the power supply of any other connected devices. Next question is, what is the sketch? Options are program coded in IoT devices, program coded in Arduino IDE, Services of Arduino Uno, services of IoT devices. So, which of the following is sketch? So, the correct option for this is program that is coded in your Arduino IDE. So, it's a unit of code that is uploaded to and run on the Arduino board. So, the correct option for this is B that is your program coded uh, in Arduino IDE. So for running a sketch what uh, you you will need is a computer Arduino IDE installed on that computer an Arduino board and a compatible data USB cable which is interconnecting your computer with your Arduino board. Next question is, what is the function setup? Point where code terminates, point where code starts, it iterates the task in the program, none of these. So what is function setup? So um, the correct option for this is the point where code starts. So the setup function is called when your sketch starts. Uh, uh, the code use it to initialize the variables, pin modes, start using libraries. The setup function will only run once 
after each power up and reset of the Arduino board. Next question is which of the following is true for the given command random 10. Options are gives random number within the range 0 to 10, give a random number within the range 1 to 10, give random number within the range 0 to 9, reset the pseudo random number generator with seed value 10. So the correct option for this question is A. So whenever you are going to put some value inside your random function, then it is going to generate the random number between 0 within the range 0 to that particular value. Uh, for example, uh, random max i means you are going to, your code is going to generate the random number between 0 to that particular max i value. And if it is like random min i and max i, then it is going to create the random number between your, within the range min i to your max i. Next question is, which kind of conflict occur when different processing logics are applied to same IoT network devices or applications? Options are semantic conflict, syntactic conflict, system conflict, device conflict. The correct option for this question is semantic conflict. So semantic conflict occurs when pro uh, different processing logics are applied to same IoT network devices or application. Semantic conflict uh, basically means uh, the message uh, uh, the message logic is not understandable. The meaning of the message is not understandable by the different devices. Next question is which of the following is true for sketch command given below delay 3000 options are it provides a delay of 3000 second it provides a delay of 3 second it provides a delay of 3000 nanosecond it provides a delay of 3000 simulation time basically this delay function uh, is uh, uh, takes the value uh, integer values which are mentioned in millisecond. So if you are uh, passing 3000, it means 3000 milliseconds. So delay function is going to create a delay and it will execute the next uh, statement of your program after that particular delay. So 3000 means 3000 milliseconds, which means 3 seconds. So it provides a delay of 3 seconds. Uh, B is the correct option for question number 25. Next question is, which of the following solution are not responsible for generating unique addresses? Options are election product code, unique product code, uniform resource identifier, IP addresses. I am repeating the question. Which of the following solutions are not responsible for generating unique addresses? Options are election product code, unique product code, Uniform resource identifier IP addresses. So I'm going to the slides where we have discussed uh, this topic. Yeah. So uh, these are uh, 
the different solution for generating the unique addresses first one is your electronic product codes second one is your upc that is your universal product code third is your uniform resource identifier and fourth one is your ip addresses so there we have options uh, one is your election product code second is your uh, unique product code third is your ip addresses and fourth one is your URI that is uniform resource identifier so both A and B in this question are incorrect because EPC stand for electric electronic product code and UPC stand for universal product code so both U, A and B are incorrect for this question next is how many digital input output pins are there in Arduino Uno options are 14 54 11 16 so in case of your arduino uno how many input output pins are there options are 14 54 11 So the correct option for this question is 40. So in case of your Arduino Uno, we have 14 digital input output pins and 6 uh, analog input pins. Next question is blank dynamically maps physical devices with other domains with different domains. Options are collaborative concept, middleware technology, end devices, cloud. Blank dynamically maps physical devices with different domains. Options are collaborative concept, middleware technology, end devices, and last one is your cloud. So the correct option for this question is middleware technology. So middleware technology dynamically maps physical devices with different domains. Next question is, which of the following ontology utilize previous data to estimate what is going to happen? Options are device ontology, physical domain ontology, estimation ontology, virtual domain ontology. this question is estimation ontology so C is the correct option so estimation ontology utilize previous data to estimate what is going to happen next Next question is, which component of UMB converts physical devices into virtually abstracted one of, as described by UDT, that is Universal Dis uh, Device Template. Options are UMB A, UMB C, UDT Mapping, UMB B. So, which component of UMB converts physical devices into virtually abstracted one? So UMB consists of two components, one is your UMB A, that is your UMB abstract and the second one is your uh, UMB adapter and second one is your UMB C, that is your UMB core. So UMB adapter is responsible for converting the physical devices to the virtually abstracted one, however your UMB core is responsible for routing. So the correct option for this question is A, that is your UMB A. So, 
next question is the interoperability between devices and device users in terms of message formats is called blank options are systematic semantic syntactic device so uh, in question it is given that in terms of message format so in terms of message format the interoperability that is there is syntactic and if it is it is message meaning then it is semantic so the correct option for this is syntactic interoperability that is c so these were the questions of week 5 and yeah so uh, uh, you can uh, for answering the, uh, this question and uh, to get more idea about uh, these topics you can follow the books also the name of the books uh, are uh, first book is introduction to internet of things by sudeep mishra and second one is uh, introduction to uh, industrial internet of things and industry 4.0 so if you want to get more insights about the topics which i have discussed today and the questions which i have discussed you can follow these two books apart from the lectures which are available on the npkf so you can follow these two books also i i'm going to upload these uh, slides uh, over the google uh, drive link and the link will be provided to you in the description of the youtube uh, video and i'll upload the video also so uh, if you want to uh, watch uh, th this again then you can uh, check the youtube video someone is asking ma'am i have one doubt what procedure i have to follow for getting top rank in this exam okay so follow the videos which are there after that solve the assignments then also read the books that is introduction to internet of things and um, that introduction to industry 4.0 and uh, iiot okay so if you will do all those things then you will get top rank in this exam Uh, would you be kind enough to type in those books for us, please? What? Would you be kind enough to type in the chat window okay. on the books that you have just referred to, please? Sure, sure. Thank you.